Hello and welcome to the UHS Hardware CCTV 101 Introduction and Overview featuring Dawa and Unibu Brands. Today we're going to begin by going over the basic concepts and terms involved in CCTV to make sure that everyone can be on the same page and understand exactly what's going on. CCTV or closed circuit television is a self-contained network of devices consisting of at least one camera, one recording device, and a monitor and all parts in between to connect, power cameras, and transfer data so that you can watch video live or save it for later to be viewed another time. The overall camera types and functions can vary greatly depending on your overall budget, the location you're installing, or whether or not you are starting a new system or updating an already existing system. These decisions overall will determine which direction you'll go with in your setup, as well as which cables you'll need and the overall complexity of your setup. So the first thing we're gonna start with is whether or not you're gonna need a DVR or an NVR. And I guess the first way to go with that is to explain what's the difference between an NVR and a DVR. So here we are at the hub of the CCTV network, the video recorder, which can either be a digital video recorder, a DVR, or a network video recorder, an NVR. The difference between the two will be seen basically in the functions of the camera that connects to them, as well as the cables that go into it. DVRs receive footage from analog cameras, which is sent over cable received by the DVR and then translated into a digital format where it can be saved onto a hard drive internal, external, or onto a cloud server, depending on which one you prefer. While an NVR receives digital footage direct to it already translated from the actual IP cameras. IP standing for internet protocol, which we'll go over in a few minutes, is basically the whole way the system works. So the main differences side by side are that NVRs are the newer system. The footage received by them is in most rights a higher quality depending on what you do in your setup or what cameras you purchase. The NVR setup, however, is a bit more expensive going forward and starting out than a DVR setup. And it can be a bit more complicated once you get into the overall setting up of the system. While a DVR is just simple plug and play, to an extent you have to run extra wires to power the cameras as they are not powered from the DVR itself. You need to run an extra power cable to them. And also they don't record audio in most rights and you would also need an extra cord for that as well. So that all needs to be thought of and planned up ahead of time. While in NVR, each cable, it's a single cable going between the NVR itself to the cameras. In most cases, sometimes they do need to be powered separately, but it's not usually the case. If desired, an NVR system can be completely wireless, while a DVR system will always be fully wired. And the IP cameras, which once again are much newer and have newer software, as well as sometimes artificial intelligence involved, can do things like identify faces, license plates, vehicles, and movement, all sorts of things that you don't normally get with a normal analog camera. One IP camera can probably cover as much as multiple analog cameras can. Both DVR and NVR devices come with four, eight, or 16 channels or ports for connecting cameras with at most 16 powered PoE ports on an NVR. There are also PoE switches available, which can add an extra number of ports to your NVR system like this one, which has 24 ports and can be connected using ethernet to the actual NVR. As you look at our cameras for a basic network setup, we have our analog cameras and we also have our IP cameras. If you look at them, there's not much difference in the way they look. The overall difference between the two of them is gonna vary in the connectors and their outputs. So if you see here on our analog camera, we have a BNC connector, which is gonna be our cable connector, as well as our power connector, and then a switch to switch between the actual output of the analog camera between CVI, CVBS, TVI, and AHD. On our IP cameras, however, we have this white cable, which has on it the overall PoE plug, or in the case that you don't have PoE and you just have the ethernet only, an actual power cable to power your camera. And that's all you need to get this working. Some of them do have higher functions such as alarm or audio out. Camera styles and functions. Camera styles can vary a bit such as bullet cameras made for internal and external uses. Great for covering a single point of view and letting passerbys know if and when they're being seen. Eyeball cameras, which mount flat and can be positioned indoors for viewing a single direction and keeping a lower profile. Dome cameras, which function similarly to eyeball cameras, aside from their protective dome, which aids in defending against tampering and obscures the cameras from view, making it harder to find possible blind spots. 
PTZ cameras or pan tail zoom or a turret style camera with remote point of view control. Able to be turned left and right, look up and down and zoom in on a subject during the live recording by the user. Cables and connectors. For analog, BNC connectors are compression style analog connectors used to terminate analog video cable. Secure, dependable, and easy to use. Siamese cable, a combined run of coaxial cable, RG59, with two insulated power cables to power analog camera and transfer data to the DVR. VGA cable, a legacy analog video cable used to connect video output to an older monitor without HDMI. HDMI, the standard for transmitting high-res digital audio and visual data to current video monitors. IP camera power supplies, for any cameras not connected to the PoE ports on your NVR. Ethernet cable, the current standard for digital IP systems, also known as CAT5e or CAT6 cable, used to transfer audio, video, and supply power over one line. It currently has the best signal strength and clarity over a long distance, at 320 feet. CAT6 is a newer type of Ethernet cable, with upload and download speeds up to 10 times faster than CAT5e. There are also power bricks available, this one being a 4-channel power brick for up to 4 analog cameras. We also have VGA to BNC converters, used to split VGA output and convert it to BNC over a longer distance to be received and watched on another monitor. One to four HDMI splitter, which can turn your one HDMI signal into four over a distance. And we also have the HDMI extender from HDMI to CAT6 or CAT5, which will translate your HDMI signal into CAT5 over a pretty long distance and then translate it back into HDMI once it gets there. Thank you for checking out our UHS Hardware CCTV 101 series. I'm Louie, it's been great having you guys here. Make sure you like and subscribe as well as hit the bell icon so you know when the next video comes out so you can be alerted and up to date. We'll be having more series coming out within this CCTV 101 so you can begin offering CCTV solutions to your customers right away. Thank you again. Come back and see us. Have a good one.